Uh, okay, thank you for opportunity to uh, present these results. In fact, um, this will be kind of a review talk. It means that I will not uh, probably give any uh, technical detail, but just ex uh, explain the, um, the ideas uh, behind this project, which I try in various um, uh, incarnations to pursue last five years, more or less. Not only this, of course, but this was one of the, my... Um, favorite topics. So it's based on uh, this particular presentation will be mainly based uh, on uh, our paper with uh, Pierre Ledusal and Alberto Rossa uh, on uh, relation between multifractals and uh, logarithmically correlated processes and uh, statistics of extremes in general multifractals, but it's uh, quite um, uh, intimately related with previous work which uh, um, um, I did in collaboration with uh, John Keating and Gnes Hyrie, and uh, part of my presentation will be based on still uh, uh, work uh, in preparation. I hope it will be finished in within next few weeks. Um, and uh, okay, so let us start smoothly. Basically, in physics, there is uh, great interest in properties of uh, multifractal patterns in systems with disorder, where basically disorder is responsible for generating multifractality. Paradigmatic example of this type of system, just to have some specific example in, uh, in mind, uh, is uh, conjectured multifractality of uh, uh, wave function at the point of Anderson localization transition and related phenomena of which uh, one of the most interesting is integer uh, quantum Hall effect, just a single uh, particle, a quantum particle in a strong magnetic field. Uh, and then in the center of uh, Landau band, uh, there is basically a um, wave function, which more or less morally looks like that. This is a result of numerical simulation. Uh, this picture uh, nicely, um, kindly provided by Ferdinand Evers and his collaborators, uh, who studied numerically various properties of such a pattern. And uh, I will t um, give an, uh, basically an informal uh, physical definition of multifractality. So basically, when physicists speak about multifractal patterns, they think uh, usually in terms of underlying lattice, although one can define it also in continuous setting, but it's more convenient uh, technically to define it in a lattice say hypercubic la lattice in d dimension of extent, uh, extent l and lattice space k so a number of sites is of order of l, l divided by a to power d it considered to be big parameter in fact as we will, will later uh, see uh, parameter justifying most of approximation i will use is log of m so log of m should be big and then uh, we uh, say that the part uh, of intensities is multifractal if uh, when we change m in the large m limit, eventually um, at um, uh, uh, intensities um, uh, basically depend on m uh, with, uh, in, um, with a set of non-trivial exponents xi, which eventually in the large m limit forms a dense set such that it's meaningful to discuss oops, to discuss the density of uh, these exponents. So we just uh, take uh, log h divided by uh, individually at every side of the lattice from 1 to m, log uh, of the intensity divided by log m, and calculate how uh, many times exponent, uh, corresponding exponent, exponent is equal to a value x. So this is the definition of the density of exponents. And basically, what is called usually multifractal ansatz, that large m behavior of this quantity is as follows. Leading term is uh, basically m to a non-trivial function of uh, this exponent x. Uh, this function f of x is called usually multifractality or singularity spectrum. Uh, and uh, in most situations of interest, it's known to be typically self-averaging. Uh, so this is well-defined uh, shape. Uh, but what is much less studied is basically, I'm pressing something. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is basically uh, the behavior uh, and uh, properties of this prefactor CM of X, which is of order one, but we will show that it sh basically shows 
quite substantial fluctuations responsible for fluctuations of the number of points in this pattern exceeding a given level. And this will be our main, uh, or one of the uh, main topics which I'd like to discuss. Uh, and uh, we will use uh, basically these insights into properties of the prefactor CM of X to characterize statistics of high and eventually the highest extreme value of intensity in a generic. Okay, I will discuss uh, what means generic in my terms, uh, multi uh, disorder um, generated multifractal pattern. So, so you want yeah. to study the, the, the large deviations, right? Uh, in some sense, yes. Uh, all, but all, you see, in some sense, all uh, multifractality is in some sense about large deviation. f of x uh, can be uh, just called rate function for large deviations. So I will be interested literally in statistics of, okay, uh, I will discuss it later on. You will see. Now, but, uh -huh. now this, I don't want to sign this index, h i yes. x i. What's, what's the index i that shows the uh, You see, you, you just change your number of sides, say, consider dense and denser. Uh, uh, lattice so or just so the amplitude yes uh, usually squared because yeah. usually we consider intensities okay. uh, positive uh, so quantities so the yes it's i is in a number of the sites on the lattice and individually and in different sizes scaling can be different singularity exponents can be different okay. so this is multifractality okay so uh, there is a big class of um, uh, multifractals which show the following uh, two fundamental properties. Uh, at least uh, in numerical, say, experiments, uh, they show these properties. So they are believed to be uh, a pattern of intensities, self-similar. And this means that uh, if, I, if I consider covariant structure of various powers of intensities at two points uh, of, of this lattice, you know, with coordinates denoted as, say, R1 and R2, uh, then, uh, typically, it depends on the distance as a power law with non-trivial exponent z, depending on q and s, of, of these uh, parameters q and s. And also, uh, there is second non-trivial exponent y, uh, which uh, um, uh, controls uh, um, dependence on the uh, volume or total number of sites. Uh, we also assume, as it, uh, it, it seems to be the case, for example, in Anderson localization, and, but also in other uh, interesting physical system, that uh, basically this pattern is specially homogeneous. It means that if I, I locally study moments of the intensity, this is practically the same as to average this intensity of the whole pattern. And indeed, these moments will, uh, will be then characterized by yet another, but we will see that this is r uh, really the most fundamental exponent, uh, zeta q, which controls behavior of the moments of this uh, multifractal field. It's easy to understand. Okay. So this H is, uh, H? is some stochastic field? Yes. It's a random field. Uh, and we assume, if you may consider this as definition, we assume that it possesses these two properties. And I would like to draw conclusions from this. Uh, you can consider this is empirical, uh, there is empirical evidence that this, uh, these two relations hold. At least, and this is not empty definition because I can uh, really show some, uh, some uh, models. Uh, there exist models <laughs> which uh, satisfy this. But I think that, uh, in fact, uh, this is a qu quite big class of models. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and at the point of transition, yes. And also, uh, transition. Yes, uh, we expect precisely this picture. At least all numerical evidence uh, points towards the uh, validity of this picture. And this, and just to remind yes. Uh, the H is, H is the psi squared, psi local psi squared. Psi squared, psi squared and that's it. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, no, basically, okay, the, uh, we assume uh, that psi square, uh, that these properties hold at distances much smaller than uh, total uh, size of uh, the system, but much larger than uh, basically lattice spacing. So, so, the, so I guess, mm. so the issues, whatever they are, they're all less than one, because that's where Oh, yes, uh, okay, this, okay, it's an interesting question. In fact, here I did not assume uh, so far. I, wa uh, I was not assuming that uh, there is uh, this is normalized field. This is probability uh, measure, so to say. 
uh, in some situations like uh, psi squared, it, it will be the case. In other situations, uh, I, uh, in some, uh, for example, in diffusion limited aggregation, there is no, uh, I mean, usually people do not normalize these multifractal fields. Uh, multifractality itself does not depend on it. Some detail will depend on normalization, but uh, I won't probably go into discussion of this. We can uh, later on discuss what depends on what not. Uh, uh, there will be some constraint then on, on, on uh, zetas uh, related to normalization, obviously. Okay, so, first, uh, yes? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, no. Why I believe this is correct? Uh, I be okay. Uh, uh, there, there is really now huge, so probably dozens, maybe hundreds of papers, no, hundreds probably not, but hundreds of papers uh, with qu quite accurate numerical simulations of now of quite extended system already at the point of Anderson transition, and they follow this phenomenology. So you may consider this is experimental evidence. I do not know any so far any, uh, okay. And also uh, informal uh, theoretical calculations based on nonlinear sigma model. And it's uh, basically um, renormalization group treatment uh, at two plus epsilon dimensions and also in some other related models. Uh, confirm this picture. So uh, on the rigorous basis, I don't know anything. But physicists believe that this is correct picture. So let us uh, take this. Uh, okay, I don't uh, think that I can add to what was already said. Okay. Uh, but anyway, let us try to, uh, to see uh, if this is correct. So uh, can we relate it to some uh, interesting, um, uh, other interesting models? Yes, we can. But for this, first of all, uh, you may wonder what is the relation of all these exponents to previ previously introduced this um, convex uh, multifractality spectrum. If you use the definition of density, which I int uh, introduced on the, on the previous, uh, basically this definition, you can rewrite these moments as integrals of the density and evaluate these integrals in large log m limit by just settle point and then get a, st a straightforward relation between exponents, set of exponents zq as a function of q and uh, this uh, multifractal spectrum, basically this is a Legendre transform. Uh, one is the Legendre transform of the other. Now, uh, let us try uh, further uh, muse a little bit on these two relations. Uh, there should be consistency uh, between these two relations. And consistency, I mean the following. If I allow uh, R1 and R2 to be uh, basically to merge, so I expect that uh, then uh, in the right-hand side, uh, I put just R, R1 and R2 to be of the order of A. So this factor then vanishes. And behavior then depends uh, solely on the ratio of L to A to power Y. But on the other hand, I can use that this should behave at the moment to power Q plus S. So this gives me one relation and this relation between exponents zeta and exponent Y. So showing that zeta is fundamental and Y is the derivative exponent. And in similar way, uh, it's natural to expect that when distance uh, between R1 and R2 is of order of uh, sample size, basically uh, this correlation function should behave as independent product of ex expected value of H to Q and H to S. This is uh, another assumption, natural assumption. This will, if this is correct, this would uh, give in, uh, another uh, relation between zetas uh, and, uh, and z's. So we see that indeed, knowing zetas, we can predict all these non-trivial exponents. Now I'd like to shift a little bit my attention uh, uh, to a different um, uh, um, f f facet of this story, namely to show a relation between uh, this type of multifractal fields and logarithmically correlated random fields. How to see it? Basically, uh, introduce log of this multifractal field and subtract for convenience uh, its expected, expected value of that log. Then simple calculation based on these two uh, formulas, so using them as, a, as an input, uh, and exploiting uh, simple identity that derivative of power taken at s equals zero gives you log. Immediate, uh, and also the f uh, basically the fact that z uh, for q equals zero, we have just normalization, uh, sum over all sides of ones, so it should be one. So zeta naught is, is one, uh, is, uh, is z one, yes. Uh, so we arrive uh, after uh, two lines of calculation to the following uh, fact that every, uh, for, for every 
homogeneous and specially uh, and um, self-similar uh, multifractal field, log of this field is a logarithmically correlated random field or random process. It, of course, this consideration and, and the strength of this, I mean, basically this uh, variance of this field is related to second derivative of uh, multifract of, of uh, uh, these multifractal exponents as a function of q, and multifractality is related with nonlinear non uh, dependence of z, uh, z, uh, these zetas as a function of q, and then we see that indeed this will be non-vanishing uh, quantity. So basically, this is a very simple observation that multifractality plus these two properties implies logarithmic correlation of, of its uh, sometimes people say generator, basically of log of this field. And therefore, we can hope to get some uh, maybe qualitative and sometimes quantita quantitative understanding of the behavior of this field if we concentrate on some simple examples of logarithmically correlated field, hoping or maybe arguing for some universality. So this will be precisely the route I'm going to follow. Uh, the, probably the most famous example of logarithmically correlated field. Oh, okay, uh, one qualification. Of course, this says nothing about higher correlations. So we cannot conclude in any way that V log of multifractal, general multifractal field is Gaussian. Moreover, it cannot be the case. Why? Because one can show that if V of R is uh, logarithmically correlated and Gaussian, then uh, uh, basically, this f of x and also uh, z of q must be quadratic, just parabo uh, uh, f of x must be parabolic, and q will be quadratic, poly uh, z to q will be quadratic polynomial in q. We know, again, uh, how we know. We know from numerical uh, simulations, very accurate, that this is not the case. Namely, in, uh, at Anderson transition, this is uh, indeed uh, some convex function with a single maximum, but it's very far for, or some time for some values of param uh, parameters from parabola. So it's really uh, generic uh, multifractal fields. There is no um, reason to expect that they are Gaussian. Still, uh, if we consider Gaussian fields, maybe we can extract some generic properties and then translate them to non-Gaussian field. I will show example of such a conjecture uh, later on if I have time because we're proceeding very slowly at the moment. <laughs> okay, so what is uh, my favorite example of logarithmically correlated pro process? Probably for most of people this is two-dimensional example of, because it's very natural of Gaussian free field. I agree this is very fundamental. But I think that um, there are interesting, I try to persuade you uh, that, and in fact, in, in physics they appeared long ago, uh, interesting uh, processes, uh, one dimensional processes with logarithmic correlations. And in fact, um, uh, one simple message which I'd like to uh, deliver in the end that uh, this logarithmic covariance structure is the most important object, that many, many properties, statistical properties, will depend only on this. And dimensionality of the, uh, say, whether it's two-dimensional field, high-dimensional field, or one-dimensional field, will play, in fact, auxiliary role. So uh, we may uh, concentrate, if we gain something in this concentration, just on one-dimensional processes with logarithmic uh, correlations. So what is the simplest, pro uh, arguably, the simplest process of this type? It's uh, just, uh, it has convenient representation as a Gaussian uh, Fourier series uh, with coefficients uh, being, uh, okay, uh, overall dependence on uh, Fourier harmonics is one over square root of n here. And Vn's uh, are just uh, independent, identically distributed complex Gaussians with uh, variance one. Formally, if you just treat it formally and cal calculate covariance structure, you will see that it's, of course, it should be periodic since it's uh, Fourier series, uh, but, but it's logarithmic, uh, ob obviously logarithmic. It's just explicitly log of modulus of sine of difference of T1 minus T2. For T1, not equal to T2. For T1 tending to T2, it diverges logarithmically, and it just shows that uh, you cannot take this uh, for face value. This is basically, uh, the series diverges with probability one. So this defines, in fact, a random distribution or random generalized function. It should be treated like that. And uh, it can be uh, thought of, if you'd like a proper mathematical definition, uh, either 
uh, as uh, in a regularized fashion with some regularization provided. And, and, and this is really convenient and I think a correct way of dealing with it because if you'd like to simulate it and study its properties, you uh, have to uh, regularize. Uh, also, you can consider it directly without any regularization as generalized processes just uh, obtained by pr uh, projection, uh, one dimensional projection of two dimensional um, Gaussian free field. Uh, but I always prefer to think about um, uh, as a regularized um, object. So what are uh, possible uh, regularizations? Of course, if you have something uh, divergent or not well behaving, uh, there are zillions of ways of uh, uh, regularizing it. Uh, but if this object uh, eventually is meaningful uh, and your regularization is, is also meaningful, we, uh, one may hope that in some sense all regularizations in the limit uh, of uh, small regularization shou uh, should be uh, equivalent. So uh, one of possible uh, ways of regularizing this uh, or taming this wild uh, object is the following. You just replace it with a collection of uh, uh, logarithmically correlated uh, discrete set of, lo of, say, m, where m will be a big parameter, something like a number of sites in the lattice, in one-dimensional lattice. And uh, this is just collection, a uh, well-defined collection of Gaussian variables uh, whose covariance structure is just obtained by discretizing this, so uh, nothing else. But then one should take care to define, in order to have a properly defined collection of Gaussian variables, to um, have positively defined uh, metrics of uh, including uh, variances, uh, the full metrics of covariances. So one can show, fortunately, this is a circulant metrics, so you can find it's all like invariance by Fourier transform. So to ensure its positivity, uh, one can show that it's enough to require that uh, variance uh, of uh, entries on the diagonal uh, basically, uh, variance of this process uh, should um, should be m dependent and should be larger than two log m. This is very uh, important fact. Otherwise, it's not uh, correctly defined. We uh, will use this model because uh, one can uh, deal with it uh, relatively easily. We will see later on that, in fact, uh, this is not only possible, uh, of course, logarithmically correlated one-dimensional processes. We will see the, that uh, very naturally appear, uh, uh, will appear processes just with straight log with, with, with instead of log sign uh, correlation in some interval. Also processes with stationary increments uh, uh, behaving log, like log. So there is the whole uh, world of these logarithmically correlated one-dimensional processes. And uh, how, again, to remind you how they are related uh, to uh, multifractal patterns, we just should take these VIs, exponentiate them, and consider these as the intensities. This will be then, according to um, our discussion, uh, will be a multifractal pattern. Okay, so this is an example of uh, just numerical simulation or generation of this process for uh, regularized processes, uh, regularized in the way that I, uh, I've just described. So for, for 2 to 12, I believe, uh, uh, points. Uh, so this is how this uh, process, uh, I mean, uh, th th this is vi visualization of this process. And we'd like to answer the following questions. We'd like to understand what, for given M, what is the scale of uh, the largest peak in this pattern? Also, if we know this scale, we will call this or, okay, uh, important scale is set by the so-called threshold of extreme values. How I define it? I define it in the following way. When m tends to infinity, there should be only of order of one points uh, above this threshold. We will see that this is a uh, working definition. We will uh, define, uh, we, we will find threshold in this way. Of course, leading order is completely trivial. What sh should be this threshold? Why? Because if we have this f of x function, then it, ends of this precisely the largest possible or in the smallest possible uh, um, intensities in this pattern. But so leading order, it amounts to finding the shape of this uh, uh, multifractal uh, um, singularity spectrum and uh, its ends, end points. But we are interested in more detailed information. We're interested in subleading order. And this is already non-trivial. We will see that it's, in, in some sense, um, uh, universal. Uh, corrections to uh, the leading order are universal. I will explain in which sense. Well, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit yes. Yes. Yeah. 
No, it's just one realization. It's a, it's a given realization. It, may, it could be, it could happen sometimes here. I just misread the, the vertical axis. Which is no, it's just one realization of this process. Ah, yeah, ah, in this sense, okay, yeah. these lines, I explained. This broken line yeah. is precisely the threshold of extreme values. In every realization, there will be only 5, yeah. 2, 100, but never uh, scaling with m or standing to infinity, number of points. And this I claim to be, for this particular process, 2 log m minus 3 half log log m, and non-trivial part in this. Okay, now... Uh, I also interested in the following. If I make a section of these processes at a height, say half of uh, this uh, extreme value threshold, what will be uh, the uh, support? What will be the type of supporting measure? In fact, it will be fractal. This fractal dimension, and this dimension is given precisely by f of x. But I'm interested not only in this, but also in fluctuations of this number uh, above this pattern. I will show that it show uh, it demonstrates interesting uh, fluctuations. So these are type of questions we'd like to answer. Now I make a logical twist and try to persuade you that these objects, precisely the same object, logarithmically correlated uh, one-dimensional processes uh, in various incarnations, appear very naturally in the world of random matrices. So how one can see this? Consider a uh, standard uh, Dyson uh, CUE, so circle unitary ensemble. It means uh, ensemble of uh, n by n unitary matrices uh, sampled uniformly from higher measure on, on um, UN. And consider the corresponding characteristic polynomials de defined uh, since uh, eigenvalue, uh, these matrices are unimodular, so all, all eigenvalues are uh, uh, complex numbers of uh, mo uh, modulus 1. So it's natural to define characteristic polynomial in this way as a function of theta. Further consider, uh, okay, by historical reasons minus two, but Im important thing, just log of this uh, modulus of characteristic polynomial. Consider this uh, as, a, uh, as a random, or basically uh, as a random function of, uh, of theta. Now, uh, following Hughes, Keating, and O'Connell, you can uh, write down kind of, if, if you like, kind of uh, Fourier representation for this object. Of course, it's periodic in this, so you can write Fourier representations. And these coefficients are nothing else as just powers of traces of un. I in, in, in fact, if you expect log, of course, you have coefficients. If you expect log of 1 plus something, you always get 1 over n coefficients. I deliberately split them in 1 over square root of m here and 1 over square root of n uh, there. Why? Because there is nice theorem by Dikonis and Shachshahani that precisely these objects if we um, fix, uh, okay, take any finite collection of these uh, coefficients and let n tend to infinity, they will tend to collections of independent, identically distributed Gaussian variables of uh, mean 0 and variance 1. So we see that this, uh, obviously, that this object is nothing else as some regularization, obviously, for finite n, of precisely the same Fourier series that I showed to you before. So in some moral sense, uh, basically, log mode of characteristic polynomial for large n is uh, a regularized version of these logarithmically correlated processes. And therefore, studying logarithmically correlated processes, we can hope to get uh, insights into values which mode of characteristic polynomial uh, to high values taken by mode of characteristic polynomial. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, this, is, this was more or less known, although this, in some sense, if you read correctly from appropriate angle, this, this uh, relation is, um, um, all these relations are in paper by Hughes, Keating, and O'Connell. Uh, although they do not make an emphasis on logarithmic correlations, but it's there, you can find it there. Now, natural question appears, at least natural, I think it's natural. What happens if I replace, uh, try to replace CUE with GUE? And uh, it turns out that situation there um, is similar in one sense, but there are, there are some interesting differences. Uh, and uh, I, in the next um, two um, view, graph, I, uh, view graphs, I'd like to discuss this. This is basically the, the, the content of um, the paper with um, Nick Sim and Boris Koruzhenko that we are writing now. So consider now uh, Hermitian GUE random matrix. Uh, with uh, this uh, uh, weight. And uh, so we know that its eigen, uh, mean eigenvalue density tends in the large n limit to 
uh, Wigner semicircular law in, in minus 2, 2. Now introduce its characteristic polynomial. Uh, and let now uh, um, consider Chebyshev polynomials, which are defined here. And uh, they are orthogonal on uh, minus 1, 1 with the weight 1 divided by square root of 1 minus u squared. And then it turns out that there is an one can write down an analog of, the pr of, 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 of this expansion. In terms of traces of u to n, uh, similar expansion goes in, uh, in basically in Chebyshev polynomials. And coefficients are given by some traces of Chebyshev polynomials of uh, GUE matrix. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, situation is more complicated than in previous, because uh, in previous uh, situation for CUE, this was exact ex expansion, ex expansion. Here it's also exact, but interesting and in fact meaningful term is, the, is here, but there is also a uh, remainder term, which I do not specify, but which is not pleasant. And basically this remainder term uh, happens because, okay, if, uh, with prob if um, all eigenvalues, not this probability one, but all eigenvalues of random unitary matrices stayed in minus 2, 2, there will be only first term. But due to the fact that some, with, uh, we know with small probability they can be anywhere, there is also remainder term. But one can show that eventually in probability it goes to zero. So, uh, but this is some work to, uh, to be done. Uh, and if, uh, morally it turns out that, um, ah, okay, now, uh, the, um, this nice theorem by Dikonik and Shachshahani has also analog, which uh, was proved by uh, Johansson, that precisely these WNs, a uh, finite collection of them, tends to Gaussian variables with uh, real Gaussian variables with zero mean and unit variance. And then uh, this uh, suggests that if you can uh, neglect in some sense this remainder, then this series tends to random series of this sort uh, but it's now not Fourier series, but expansion in orthogonal polynomials. And you immediately calculate its covariance, just simple and straight uh, logarithmically correlated object. So they, we see that uh, it's a different process, but it's uh, similar to what we have. This is what we call global, um, global scale, because we consider here X is uh, basically uh, to be Okay, uh, what contributes here is, uh, is, is the global scale, which related with the density, with semicircular uh, density. You may ask a more detailed question. Uh, you can consider so-called mesoscopic regime. It means something which knows about uh, already on a scale, uh, living on a scale much smaller than uh, to, um, uh, width of the semicircle, but much larger than typical separation between uh, GUE eigenvalues in large and limit, which we know is of order 1 of n. For example, take distances of order of uh, 1 to n to alpha, where alpha is uh, uh, larger than 0 but smaller than 1. This will be mesoscopic uh, in, in the sense I'd like to consider. So consider, define, okay, so uh, we call, uh, consider parameter dn, which is much smaller than n in this sense that I described, but much larger than 1, just say square root of n, for example. And consider also a fixed uh, positive parameter eta. Now consider not just log, of, log mode of characteristic polynomial, but consider it increment from a given point. So basically you fix uh, the point x in the spectrum, you uh, fix also this eta, and you consider, you just make, uh, this eta makes a shift from, uh, from uh, real axis to the complex plane, to the distance of order of, of one over divided by this scale dn, this mesoscopic scale dn. And you consider also increment of the value of log mod of characteristic polynomial by, by the distance of order of one over dn. And now you are interested in, in this object as a function of this increment, a function of t. So one can find uh, ex uh, exact, for, for any finite n, a representation of this difference as now Fourier integral, not uh, just uh, some series, but Fourier integral with this characteristic um, uh, to, uh, factor in front one over square root of, of Fourier variable omega and coefficients given by traces of these uh, uh, complex exponentials of, of h. Now, 
Uh, basically, uh, one can verify, although it's easier said than done, but uh, it can be done, uh, that uh, basically uh, these coefficients Vn tend to, uh, in the limit, tend to infinity in appropriate sense. It, they tend to Gaussian white noise, complex white noise. It means that basically mean zero uh, Gaussian process with mean zero and delta functional covariance. But of course, it should be defined against uh, appropriate test functions and all that. I won't discuss it, but it's what we are writing now. And in this sense, we see uh, that basically uh, this process will will uh, tend to the object given by these integrals where these are these white noise. So what is this process? It turns out uh, that this is a very interesting process by itself. Namely, we can show that this is proper, uh, appropriately defined a, a singular limit of fractional Brownian motion. So what is fractional Brownian motion? Fractional Brownian motion is, a, I think, uh, it's one of the most interesting uh, uh, random Gaussian processes indexed by uh, um, parameter h, which is called the uh, Hurst exponent, and which has covariance structure uh, given here. Basically, it's process with stationary increments uh, where increments grow like 2 to h. So if you literally allow h to 0, you won't get any well-defined process. Although morally, zero, uh, power 0 should be something like log, but it's not defined in this way. So the correct way of defining it, wh why are this integral? And there is, uh, in fact, definition. Uh, this is called harmonizable representation for fractional Brownian motion. But uh, always in the literature, as far as, uh, as we know, the case h uh, equal to 0 was carefully avoided. And one can give, in fact, one parameter extension of, of, of this definition, namely, uh, usually, uh, for, for to get standard Brownian motion, you should forget this uh, eta. But with eta, we get well-defined uh, h to 0 limit which shows precisely logarithmic correlations uh, regularized by parameter eta. So uh, this shows uh, relation of uh, random matrices to logarithmically correlated processes. And from now uh, on, I uh, just will try, how much time do I have? Uh, ah, okay, great. So maybe I will say something meaningful. Um, okay, so okay. now uh, I'd like to um, give to you some broad picture uh, which um, is a result of mostly heuristic physical uh, type arguments, but based on very precise calculations, uh, which allow to uh, put forward uh, very uh, well-formulated conjectures about statistics of high and extreme values of this multifractal field. So um, the story goes as, as follows. In fact, these logarithmically correlated fields, and one dimension, by the way, I forgot to mention that in engineering literature and also in physical literature, one-dimensional logarithmically correlated processes, uh, they are quite popular and they are known by the name 1 over f noises. In fact, they appear in many systems far from equilibrium, also in equilibrium fluctuations of uh, conductance in some in some uh, particular um, random conductors, and in many, many, many other situations, also beyond, uh, beyond um, uh, physics. For example, there is a claim that one of wave noise is a very faithful description of, span of uh, um, encephalogram uh, of a patient uh, with no external input. So basically, a patient is devoid from of, of any external input, and then uh, basically people uh, record his encephalogram and uh, expand uh, and make a Fourier expansion, and they find more or less this type of a process. When so, no, not not only in most of cases, even not. But uh, we can say something meaningful only on Gaussian case, and I don't know which features are important. I mean, uh, for which, uh, okay, I have. I can argue uh, for which features I, uh, I believe Gaussianity is not important or can be easily extended. Uh, for others, I just do not have any idea. Okay, so, um, so basically this is, these are interesting models. And in last uh, maybe 10 years, more or less, it was realized that if we consider these fields or uh, basically or one-dimensional processes 
as a random landscape on which we will play statistical mechanics, in which sense I'll explain to you. Uh, then uh, such systems show interesting features, in particular non-trivial phase transitions of, uh, of uh, spin glass type. Uh, so what I mean by statistical mechanics? Basically, if we have a, a, a random function and, and think of it as, as, as a landscape, you always can construct basically Boltzmann-Gibbs measure by just exponentiating it, considering exponential minus inverse temperature times this uh, random function, and divided by normalization, which is given by partition function. So in this way, way one can think of it as a single classical particle uh, thermalizing, say, under uh, some uh, thermal or Langevin forces, and uh, reaching equilibrium in this landscape, which is given by this Boltzmann-Gibbs uh, measure. OK. So suppose you have v of x, which is yeah. random. Think, OK, so some random landscape. Uh, to, to have it well defined, consider it between 0 and L, where L is will be a big parameter. OK, consider just me measure, uh, which is given by which is normalized to 1. That's it. So I'd like to study this object and use it to extract, uh, the whole program is using it uh, to extract properties of extreme of v of x. Why it's feasible? With this, with this weight. Uh, you see, no I'd like to study this measure. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to use this study to extract some information about extreme of v of x itself. If you like, if you like. But uh, it's useful to think of it as, as a problem in statistical mechanics of a single particle, because we will see the change in beta, we will have non-trivial phase transition. And moreover, one can uh, argue uh, that in 1D, this is the only possible situation to have a phase transition for the measure. Otherwise, you won't, for any other type of random uh, function with uh, any other correlation, either decaying faster than uh, to, to, to infinity or even increasing faster than log, you won't have transition. You will be in one or the other phase. I do not have time, but I can give you this entropic versus, R, uh, versus energy arg argument for this. So uh, basically, um, in physics literature, it was realized, uh, I think, uh, okay, I'm not sure this was the first, but first uh, very important paper was by Carpentier and Le Dussal, who realized that there is this type of phase transition. In fact, there was also early paper by um, uh, Shamon Mudrin collaborators, which also uh, play, played an important role. But I mentioned mainly uh, this Carpentier and Le Dussal. And uh, then uh, it turned out that uh, one can find also similar phase transitions also in other related problems. For example, interestingly, in the problem of decaying Burgess turbulence. Namely, uh, consider Burgess equation, uh, which is unforced, but has a random initial condition. It, it's not just a random initial uh, condition, but a random initial condition, which is a gradient of a regularized 1 over f noise. And ask what will be uh, statistics of, uh, of the velocity at, 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 at later times. It turns out that uh, this problem will have an untrivial transition uh, at some uh, finite value of viscosity which is quite unexpected, I think. So you, uh, for higher viscosity, your velocity profile will be always Gaussian. But for, uh, for viscosity tending to zero, uh, it becomes uh, uh, abruptly, so like a, like a phase transition, it becomes uh, non-Gaussian. Uh, non so this is also manifestation of a similar phenomenon because this type of Burgers equation uh, or solution of the Burgers equation by Kohlhoff transformation can be mapped on a very similar type of problem and studied by similar means. Also, mm -hmm. one, but but in fact uh, the same uh, qualitatively the same will happen in uh, any D if you uh, allow logarithmically correlated uh, initial data. So uh, just it was analyzed in 1D because there is a very nice relation of, of, of this problem to beta ensembles of random matrices to uh, edelman dimitru ensemble. Uh, and uh, this helps to analyze it in, in more detail. But in higher D, we do not have this. Uh, and, uh, but qualitatively, we, we do not expect any difference. OK, 
So as a result of this not yet rigorous, but uh, I hope insightful development in physics, we have now understanding of uh, statistics of high and extreme values of these processes. OK, so first of all, what about this counting function? Namely, the no by counting function, I just call uh, an integral of this density, which is nothing else, as the number of points in my pattern exceeding a level uh, uh, fixed by, by this uh, value x, or, or exceeding the level uh, precisely 2x log m uh, in my normalization. So uh, one can basically calculate integer moments of this, uh, of this object and uh, find out that in large m limit, they, uh, in these integer moments in some range of parameters are precisely given by Zellberg integral. Since Zellberg integrals are nice objects, uh, explicit in terms of, although, although they are products of gamma functions, but still uh, they are manageable, at least at the level of theoretical physics. And one can uh, infer from them basically the whole probability density for this, for this variable. And this is what, what was conjectured on the basis of these moments, that the probability density of uh, this uh, counting function divided by some scale, which I will discuss in the moment, is given by this explicit expression uh, in some range of, of, of parameters of this ratio where smaller than the threshold, where the threshold diverges when number of points tends to infinity. Uh, so what one can uh, uh, say about this? Most important and uh, silent feature is the power law tail, which depends on this level. So basically, uh, this is the main uh, take home message in this point. So the number of points in multifractal pattern exceeding some level comparable with the highest level, say one half of it, uh, is quantity which is fluctuating with the density which has a uh, power, uh, power law tail. And uh, this tail, de uh, tail exponent depends on the height. So basically, uh, when you uh, this is for all heights between 0 and 2, and 2 is precisely the normalization when you uh, achieve the highest possible level, this uh, threshold of extreme values. And I will discuss it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, from some point. Uh, but it, they depend on one parameter. So there is a way, uh, the user, uh, not just numbers, but they are functions of some parameter. Yes, 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 of course, yes. Yes, and then you can extract the uh, behavior of this function. Oh. OK. Uh, yes, but OK. But this is, uh, this is like that. This is power law tail. And the, uh, exponential cuts it, basically, if you'd like. Very, so then it reaches maximum due to this exponential, because it's basically cut by this tail. Oh, maybe, no, it's cor n to power 1 over, uh, 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 ah, maybe, 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 okay, maybe there is some, I should check, maybe there is a plus. It, okay, it should be <laughs> morally like this. Yes, I, yes. No. Yes. So if n tends to infinity, this should be I immaterial. It should be just n. This is what happens, I think. No? If n tends to infinity, this tends to 0 because it's n to some negative power. The exponential is 1. Yes. No, so it's correct. Uh, and then, it, it, this, of course, this is basically how this exponential works. It's, it kills this distribution. OK. No, I hope it's correct. If not, then I will show you <laughs> privately correct one. Uh, maybe I copied it incorrectly, but I think it's correct. Uh, OK. Uh, where? Uh, one of these. So when, going, uh, when n goes to 0, this should uh, very fast decay. It's one. <laughs> X is. Uh, indexing the level, uh, you see, you have your, uh, this pattern, fluctuating pattern. Uh, its highest point is, is 2 log m. So if you multiply it with x, uh, with, or maybe half of x, then it, it will index basically cuts at a level comparable with the maximum. 
So this x uh, is... Uh, is the, uh, yes, yes. So this exponent of fluctuations, uh, of, you see, uh, so what happens? When x tends to 2, this tends to n minus 2. So this will be a very, very uh, long tail with all positive moments uh, beyond normalization diverging. This is precisely the point of transition. Is it more clear now, this expression? Okay. But apart from this, of course, this is an important expression, but uh, equally important is characteristic scale, because this will, uh, in fact, describe what is characteristic scale of these fluctuations. For this, we have ex explicit expression. It shows multifractal feature, m to f of x, where f of x is simple parabola, which it must be for Gaussian processes. So this parabola ends at x equal plus and minus 2, which are extreme points. So uh, to, uh, in, the, uh, in this sense, uh, as I mentioned, um, um, leading term is trivial. But importantly, uh, important outcome of this uh, plane with Zellberg integral, this is inherited from Zellberg integral, this gamma function here. Why it's important? Because you see that gamma function has a pole when x approaches plus or minus 2. So when, um, now, how I can use this? Uh, suppose I'd like to know where is this threshold of extreme values. I should just say that this is precisely when this n of t for large m is of order of unity. Because this is a typical scale of this uh, number of points above given level. This is precise. For example, what is typical number of uh, this counting function for a given level? I define it as exponential of expe expected value of log. This is typical value. So uh, this will be of order of uh, precisely uh, up to a trivial factor uh, will be nt. So if I set nt to uh, um, something of order of unity, I should be able to extract position of, of this threshold to the subleading order. And uh, it turns out that this gamma function uh, changes this behavior. Why, um, why I insist on this gamma function? Because this factor is precisely expected value of number of points. So we see that between typical and expected value, mean value, uh, there is a uh, parametric difference close to the threshold. And uh, if I use correct expression for the typical, I get that correction term has a coefficient 3 half. If I used uh, instead uh, just uh, wanted to ask when mean number of points becomes of, of order of unity, this would give me leading term the same, but correction will be instead uh, with coefficient 1 half. And this transmutation of 1 half to 3 half is a characteristic feature of extremes of uh, logarithmically correlated fields and functions. Uh, should be compared with calculations of uh, Bremson and, and Zituni for two dimensional, for extremes of two dimensional uh, Gaussian random fields. So this, I hope, uh, is quite a qualitative explanation why it happens. It happens due to the power law uh, strong fluctuations of the number of points such that close to the point, uh, uh, this uh, long tail uh, ensures the typical value and mean value, they are parametrically different. This is why uh, one, uh, it's not one half, but three halves. One half is characteristic value for short range correlated processes. One can show that for all processes shorter than uh, log, uh, it will be one half in this way. Mm -hmm. mm, I, I wish it were, <laughs> no, no, not yet. Uh, because, uh, 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 no, it's, you see, it's not rigorous, but it's, in fact, uh, it's, it goes through the same uh, deal. We put this into our paper with Keating. Uh, it's based on uh, fischer hartwig asymptotics for moments. Because, okay, so uh, it amounts to studying, basically, in the end of the day, moments, integer moments of, the, of this uh, partition function. One can relate it by uh, some Laplace transform to this counting function. So, basically, uh, moments of this. And one can define similar moments for characteristic polynomials as well. Uh, basically, consider log of this, log of characteristic polynomial as this V. And then you will have some moments of, uh, you need to evaluate some integrals of moments of characteristic polynomials. And for GUE, you can relate them to, by fischer hartwig to some, again, to Zilberg integrals. So basically, we see that the leading terms are the same as in this regularized model that I discussed. Now, extracting from the moments the whole distribution is still non-rigorous step, although I, I'm sure it <laughs> should be correct. But it's non-rigorous. There, there are some subtleties which prevent us from claiming that this is really uh, theorem. And I think uh, they are not trivial subtleties, so it's not easy to convert them to rigorous statements. 
Yes, yes, this is one of these things. We can now, for low moments, we can uh, give correction term, but for all simultaneously we cannot. But also, uh, what um, uh, Sasha mentioned, uh, there, there are subtleties, uh, although physicists know how to, even for bad behaving distributions, how to convert the knowledge of moments to the knowledge of distribution itself. Still, to make it rigorous, it's a challenge, because, uh, okay, there are some subtleties in this conversion, which we do not know how to do. No, before I th uh, what means? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, it's almost determined. There is a recent paper by uh, by Ostrovsky on very similar, basically also on, on extending uh, Zellberg integral as a Mirovorfic function to complex plane of parameter, which is basically the same problem. Uh, it's, but one can say the same problem, and he showed that it's almost determined. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's margin. It's it's precisely margin of uh, situation where you can extract and cannot extract. So uh, he even specifies what additional information is needed the, to make it, but it's not available at the moment. Uh, so, so there is a reason why we can extract the moment. Yes. Uh, there is? Okay. Yeah. I probably should finish soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe still five minutes just to, to give some flavor. Uh, okay. So uh, I may, may, maybe I skip this. I ju just claim is that using th uh, this uh, type of insight, we can claim what happens for non-Gaussian multifractal field. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, correction will be three half always. This will be universal. And, no and uh, system dependent part will be derivative of multifractal singularity spectrum at, the at, the at this point of uh, at the age of uh, f of x, where f of x, uh, f of alpha uh, vanishes. And interestingly, completely independently, without claiming this, it's just one can extract from the paper. I was not aware. I was told just a couple of months ago that in a paper by Adario Berry and uh, Reed, and also Idecon, uh, recent, uh, relatively recent paper, for particular model, basically for branching random walk, which can be related to some particular infinite dimensional version of logarithmically correlated processes, uh, this is precisely what happens. So they have this formula. Okay, so we, we claim that this should be of general validity. Conjecture. Okay. Now. No, we claim that this part should not depend. We do not. It, it's conjecture that it does not depend. Yes. Yes. And we use some again informal physical insights from paper by Mirlin and Evers when they studied. Uh, Related moments in the point of Anderson transition. Again, I mean, to, to the extent allowed by nonlinear sigma model. Okay. Uh, now, very briefly, uh, probably I won't go ma uh, too far. Basically, using the knowledge of moments of of of, of this z, you can extract, uh, you can reformulate the problem um, as to getting statistics of uh, maximum. Uh, absolute maximum of this logarithmically correlated field. Still, because of this phase transition happening, you, you, one cannot do it, uh, this continuation across the transition without further conjectures. So it's conjecture, it's not again theorem. But it's very precise because it gives explicit uh, probability density. This is probability density that we claim for this particular type of logarithmically correlated process, even in terms of Bessel function. And this should be this, uh, the absolute maximum of uh, uh, C modulus of CUE polynomial should be given by this, also by this formula, if this correspondence is correct. This is uh, numerical uh, confirmation in my mind, but you may consider it as maybe disproof. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not ideal. But it's density of maxima of CUE polynomial uh, compared with this prediction. You see that it's reasonable, but not ideal. Uh, although polynomials were deliberately taken not very big. Why? Because we wanted to use similar consideration for modeling uh, Riemann zeta function behavior, uh, uh, maximum of modulus of Riemann zeta function along the critical line, and then corresponding values of n should not be very big. But uh, there, okay, I just flash, their correspondence is, okay, is even worse, but we understand why. Uh, okay, partly understand why. 
uh, we cannot claim that we understand fully, but if at all this theory uh, predicts anything about uh, general uh, correlated field, this should be universal tail. There is understanding that this tail should be universal. And the whole behavior depends on particular covariant structure of log. If it log sign, it will be one um, front. If it log of mod, it will be different uh, behavior. So it's not universal. But this is expected to be universal. So we think that the reasonable agreement uh, is a confirmation of this fact, although it's, of course, open to further discussion. OK, so this is a summary. So I hope I persuaded you that disorder generated multifractal patterns are intimately connected to log correlated random fields, not obligatory Gaussian. Now, uh, log mode of characteristic polynomials of random matrices on the global scales, they're examples of uh, so called one of wave noises, logarithmically correlated uh, stationary processes. And on mesoscopic scale, increments of this process give uh, rise to specific. Uh, type a special case, singular case of fractional Brownian motion with Hurst exponent e uh, equal to zero. And exploiting methods of statistical mechanics uh, of disordered systems, we attempted to understand statistics of minima and eventually the maximum, of course, the same for polynomials over various intervals and uh, related moments and high values. And we boldly conjectured that this should be related to uh, behavior of modulus of Riemann function along critical line and more general class of disorder uh, of logarithmically correlated field to multifactor. So what does it say for, what does it say for Riemann? What, what's the conjecture for Riemann Weber? Okay. This is conjecture. A log of, okay. Take uh, an interval yeah. of, of the length. Okay, let me just uh, be pre precise. So T is a parameter height along uh, this axis. Uh, so take an interval which uh, of order of unity uh, at height t, of, uh, interval of order of unity. It will contain of order of log t divided by uh, log t um, uh, zeros. Should we compare then in this inter take several sam or many samples of that sort and uh, make a histogram. Then prediction, if our theory is meaningful, this is a prediction for the uh, first of all, the correction term uh, for, for behavior of the maximum, it will be non-random, it will be deterministic depending on NT. This is three halves are in this uh, converted to three quarters by division by two, by some historical reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just take uh, uh, mod modulus of uh, Riemann zeta function uh, along the critical line. So we uh, make statistics in the following way. We, ta we subdivide, take height t, uh, subdivide uh, at, uh, around height t in intervals of order of unity, and make, use them as a, uh, independent samples for Wait, make. So uh -huh. Yes, okay. yes, modulus of, of zeta function and log this one. And this is prediction for it. And this is numerics uh, available. Uh, our um, collaborator, Grace Harry, went up to, uh, it's not written here, uh, 10 to th uh, 38 zeros, so quite high, in order to get reasonable agreement. You can hear about two or three of these. Ah, okay. Okay. And uh, this helped to get at least something uh, not infinitely far from what we predict. Uh, I cannot claim that it confirms, but it does not contradict. Okay, uh, I think uh, he should, if he at all, <laughs> at all show, showed it, he should show it in better scale. Uh, one can show it's in log-log scale, but uh, it's in fact also in, 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 in straight scale, you see the, uh, strong deviation around maximum. But here it would be helpful, and it's, it's reason. okay, I do not have this figure, but it's re believe me, it's reasonable. It's not a ideal, of course, but it's reasonable. So it, I, I would uh, cautiously say these results do not contradict to our predictions. Do not obviously contradict to our prediction, <laughs> to be extremely cautious. But I think it's an <laughs> interesting insight into possible behavior of maximum. Okay, that's it. Thank you.